This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're going to make our composite behavior look a little bit better and be a little bit more easy to manage using a custom editor. So in order to do this, we need to create an editor folder in our assets so that Unity knows that this is specifically going to be affecting the actual Unity in, um, editor window here. And inside of here, we're going to create a new c -sharp script called composite behavior editor. Open this up in Visual Studio. And actually close our cohesion behaviors that I have here. And I am going to open up the composite behavior just in case I need it for reference. So the first thing in here is I'm going to add an attribute above the class declaration. And this is going to be custom editor type of composite behavior. Now for this to actually work, we need to include a namespace up here. So I'm going to add using Unity Editor as an additional namespace, and that will get access to that custom editor attribute. We're also going to change this from inheriting from mono behavior to inheriting to editor. And this is going to be what now tells whenever we have a composite behavior scriptable object in our inspector window, this is going to be in charge of saying how it should be uh, rendered for us. We can delete, start, and update. We're not going to need either of those. Instead, what we're going to use is an override method, public override void on inspector GUI. Now, by default, it will populate that with the base on inspector GUI, and this will just simply render it as render the composite behavior as it would normally be rendered. We're actually going to delete that though. And what we can see happens right now is if we jump back to save that and jump back to Unity. If I go to the composite behavior, we see that nothing is getting rendered now, and that's because we haven't given our editor anything to do. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to have, want to have a reference to the composite behavior, the object that we're actually on. By default, we don't have this, so we need to create a reference to it. So we're going to say composite behavior, I'm simply going to call this CB for short, equals, and then we're going to put in parentheses, we're going to cast something to a composite behavior. Oops. And what we're going to cast is called target. And target is this object, the object that is whatever the inspector is looking at, but it only looks at it by default as an object, like the most generic possible. We need to cast it specifically to a composite behavior so we can get access to its variables and things like that. Now the other thing about working with the Unity kind of old editor system is it's basically, imagine that you're writing a Word document, but you basically have to tell Word where the cursor is explicitly rather than it automatically moving for you. And so a lot of what we're going to be doing is going to be working with like certain coordinates that we want our fields and stuff to appear at. And so we're going to kind of create a object to keep track of those positions. We're going to create a rect object to do that. So I'm going to say rect. And I'm just going to call this r equals editor GUI layout dot begin horizontal. This particular method returns a rect for us, and what it does is it basically creates a rect wherever the quote unquote cursor currently is across the across the entire inspector window. So it gives us the width and the kind of initial position that we want for our cursor. What it doesn't give us though is a height. This has a height of zero at the moment. So we're going to change that by saying r.height equals editor GUI utility dot single line height. And that's going to be useful for us because that's basically the height of all the text in the inspector window. And so that just gives us now this nice sort of baseline cursor, quote unquote, that we can use to tell all of the fields we're going to populate where they should appear. So this is all sort of the initial setup of the inspector. Now from here, we can do one of two things. If we don't have any behaviors in this, we should probably throw up a warning saying, hey, you don't have anything in here. If you put this into your flock, it's not going to do anything. But then from there, if we do have behaviors, we want to start listing them out. So we can do this using a simple if statement. Check for behaviors, 
And so we'll say if cb.behaviors equals null for some reason, which it shouldn't, it should always at least be a kind of a default array, but on the off, off chance that it isn't, or if it is cb.behaviors.length equals zero, meaning that there's an array, but it's an empty array, in either of these cases, then what we're gonna simply do is we're gonna flag a warning and say, hey, uh, there are no behaviors in here. So we'll say editor GUI layout dot help box no behaviors in array and we have to give this a message type and so we'll use a message type dot warning it's not a full-on error it's not something that's going to break the game per se but it's something that we want to let the user know So we can actually see this if we were to create a new composite. This, this existing composite has um, behaviors in it, so it's not going to give us this warning. But if I create a brand new composite behavior, we see that that appears. And so that lets us know and lets us know we need to do some other stuff. I'm actually just going to delete that because we don't need it. And we can jump back to Unity. Okay. So now if we were to add something, like an another line or something, it would actually appear, we haven't moved the cursor with this, so we need to kind of reset and move the cursor. So we're gonna do that by saying, editor GUI layout dot end horizontal, and then R equals editor GUI layout dot begin horizontal, oops begin horizontal. So this is kind of, this is a little bit of a hacky solution, but it basically bumps us down to the bottom of the warning for us. And once again, we're also going to set our height to the single line height again. Okay. So that's if we don't have any behaviors. Otherwise, we do want to list out all these behaviors, and this is where we're going to get into a, a lot of the um, a lot of the stuff that we're actually doing. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set a position for our for our cursor um, a little bit inset from the very edge of the inspector window. Because if you notice in the inspector, if we go to something like our flock, there's a little bit of padding between the actual labels here and the side, and the horizontal cursor thing actually puts you right up against the edge. So we're going to just give ourselves a little bit of kind of uh, like I say padding here. So we'll say r dot x equals 30, and that's just going to give us that, that margin on the left. Now the first thing we're going to be putting in here are our uh, behaviors on, on each row, and then we're going to have on that same row, a little bit after the behaviors, we're going to have the weight that we want to add to it. So they're going to both be on the same row, we're going to know that they always line up and match up, and that there's one to one a behavior for every weight, and vice versa. So we're going to create the width, width of, the, um, of the behavior to actually be kind of expandable depending on how wide the inspector window is, and then the weight is actually gonna be a solid value. Um, so for the, for the behavior section, we're going to put in a width. We're gonna say r.width equals editor GUI utility dot current view width, and this gives us the width of the inspector window at this time, minus 95f. So 95 pick, that's actually, this is technically in pixels even though it's a float value. Um, so that's gonna be, so it's basically gonna be the width minus um, 95 pixels. And then we're gonna add an editor GUI.label field at position R. And it's going to simply have the word behaviors. And that's all we need for the label itself. Next we're gonna do the same idea but for the um, for the uh, weights. So we'll say r dot x equals editor GUI utility dot current view width minus 65 f. So that's going to be all the way almost to the to the right, but then going to go back 65 pixels. And then we're going to have the R width equal to 
60. So that's going to have about five pixels of padding um, or of margin on the right side. Then we're going to do another editor GUI label field. In this case, it's going to be weights. Next, I'm going to push down the um, cursor about not, not um, the line height, but actually a little bit more than the line height. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say r dot y, so the vertical position plus equals editor GUI utility dot single line height times 1.2f. So just to give us a little bit of padding between these um, initial headers and the actual lines where we're going to be putting in the behaviors. So we can actually see this now working. If we go to our existing composite, we should see that we have behaviors here and weights here, and we can kind of scale this, and weights stays in place. It's always 65 pixels away from the edge, but behaviors will stretch, so this field will actually stretch wider if we so desire it to. So the next thing we need to do is for each behavior that we have, we need to show that on the line. So we're going to say for each flock behavior, behavior in cb.behaviors, So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to iterate through all the behaviors and show both the behavior and the weight. We're going to do this with a for loop because we're going to need the index of both the behavior and the weight to match up. It'll be easier that way for us to check it. So what we'll do here is we'll say for and i equals zero. i is less than cb.behaviors.length i plus plus. And then what we'll do in here First thing we're going to do is we're going to set our cursor, the x value of the cursor, to 5 away from the edge. So r.x equals 5f, and that's because we're going to put a label in front of our actual um, behavior field. So we'll say, and then r.width equals 20. And then we'll do an editor gui.label field r as the position, and we're going to pass in i dot to string. So this integer here, whatever we're at, turn it into a string, and that will be what appears. Next, we're going to keep our, um, we're going to stay on the same line, but we're going to change our width in our x position. So we're going to say r dot x equals 30f. So this is going to line up now with the behaviors label. R dot width will be the editor GUI utility dot current view width minus 95f and R, sorry. And then we're going to say here, we're going to actually show a field for the, um, for the behavior. So we're going to show flock behavior, we're going to cast this to a flock behavior, we're going to show editor GUI dot object field. So by default this would be, um, this would return an object, but we're going to want it to return the flock behavior in just a minute, so we're going to cast it to that, but it's going to be object field R, it's going to show the um, behavior, or sorry, CB dot behaviors I. It's going to show a type of, we need to give it the actual type that we want it to take in. So we're going to say type of flock behavior. And lastly, we're going to pass in the Boolean value false. And this is going to check whether or not the um, field
field should be allowed to take in objects that come from the scene. In this case, we don't want scene objects. We only want scriptable objects which come from our assets. So we're going to put in false there. Now this is giving us kind of a complaint right now, and that's because we're not doing anything with this information. We're kind of taking what this is allowing us to do is kind of pass in a scriptable object, but it's not going anywhere. So we need to make sure that we also say that we're assigning this. If we put something, drop something into this field, it gets assigned back to this location. So we'll say here, cb.behaviors i equals flock behavior and all of this. Okay. So that's how we would set our behavior. And this creates that field for us. In fact, we can jump back to Unity and see now that we should have they're not, they're all kind of piled up right now, unfortunately, because we haven't adjusted our um, Y position yet, but we see that we have the field itself for the um, different, for the behavior. So the next thing we want to do is we actually do want to um, now figure out the same idea, but for the width, or for the weight rather. So we're going to say r.x equals editor GUI utility dot current view width minus 65 again r dot width will equal 60 and then similarly we're going to set our potentially set our cb um, width at index i equal to, and in this case we can use editor gui.float field, which we don't need to cast, Unity knows that's a float for us, at position r, and it's simply going to show whatever value is currently, oops, it should be cb weights index i, and likewise weights index i. Okay. Lastly, we're going to create that um, line break here. So we'll say r.y plus equals editor GUI utility dot single line height times, and we'll just do 1.1f. I do like having a little bit of padding between these. Um, I find it just makes it a little bit clearer, but um, we don't need to do quite as much as between the header. Okay, so now with that, we'll have both the weights appear now and we'll have them all on their own separate lines, which we can see if we jump back to Unity here. And there, now we actually have these each on their own separate line. Now, one thing about this now is that we've lost our array controls. We can't set, you know, a different, if we wanted to add another behavior, we can't just simply set the value, the number of elements in the array higher and then add them in. So we need, we do need to create a way to um, implement that. And so we're going to do that with a couple of new buttons for us. So the first one, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of we're going to do that process of um, resetting our horizontal here. We're going to say editor dot editor GUI layout dot end horizontal. Clear that out, and now we're going to say r dot x equals five pixels. R dot width equals editor GUI utility dot current view width minus 10. So we're going to create a button that is the entire width of the window except for a padding of 10 or five pixels on each side for a total of 10. And we're going to set the r dot y plus equals editor GUI utility dot single line height times 0 0.5. So we're just going to add yet another, in addition to the 1.1 that we've moved down here, we're going to add another half a line height for a little bit of spacing between the button and the collection of behaviors. And now we're going to add the button itself. And how buttons work is kind of like this idea here, where if you drop something into this field, it will get assigned here. Likewise, for our buttons, we're going to check if the button has been pressed. So we'll say if GUI.button use the position R again of our cursor, and then we're gonna use the label add behavior.
And what we'll do here is we're going to actually call a method we're going to write called add behavior. And likewise, we're going to add another button for removing behaviors. So we'll say r.y plus equals editor GUI utility single line height times one and a half because we have to account for the button's height as well as the spacing between them. And then here we only want this button to appear if there is um, if there are any behaviors to remove. Uh, we, if there are no behaviors to remove there's no point to this button so we can actually just eliminate it. So we'll say if cb.behaviors does not equal null and cb.behaviors.length is greater than zero, meaning we definitely have some behaviors in here, then we will check if gui.button r remove behavior in which case here we will remove the behavior. So that's everything really the core of our behavior editor. We do need to add these two new um, methods. So I'm going to go all the way down to my last bracket here so I'm outside of on inspector GUI and I'm going to create these two new methods. So the first one will be called void add behavior. And it's going to take into it a composite behavior. Call that CB again. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get the original size of the array. So we're going to say int old count equals. And here we need to check first off if that behaviors array is null, because if it is, then we'll just assume it's a size of zero. Otherwise, we'll just get the actual size from the array. So we'll do that with a conditional operator. We'll say cb.behaviors does not equal null. If it does not equal null, then we can get cb.behaviors.length. Otherwise, we'll just use the number zero. Then we will say Lock behavior array new behaviors equals a new flock behavior array of size old old count plus one. So the nice thing about this is even if there's either if there's no array and it's zero, then we're getting an array of size one. Or if it's an empty array, we'll get an array of size one, and anything else, it will always be the size plus one. We'll say float new weights, same idea, new float array of size old count plus one as well. And then we'll iterate through and populate the original values. So we'll say for int i equals zero i is less than old count i plus plus new oops, new behaviors i equals cb dot behaviors i new weights i equals cb dot weights i The last new behavior will, still, will stay as null because we haven't put anything in it yet. However, the new weight, we don't want it just to be zero because if the user you know, puts in a new behavior and just goes away, then the new behavior won't take effect and they might think something's going wrong. So we want to set that weight to a default of one. So we'll say new weights full count, which we know is the size of new weights minus one equals one F. So that will always come in with a weight of one. And then we simply need to assign these, the new weights and new behaviors to the uh, composite behaviors variables. So we'll say 
cd dot behaviors equals new behaviors and cb dot weights equals new weights. And that's all we need to do to add a behavior. To remove a behavior is actually even a little bit easier than this because we don't have to we don't we know for sure that there's not it's not null. We have to create a new array, but it's a little bit less um, guesswork, so to speak. So what we can do here is we can say remove behavior. Copy the add behavior. We're just going to change the name here to re remove behavior. Still going to pass in the composite behavior object. We're going to get rid of all of this, and we can just say here cb dot behaviors dot length because we know for sure because we are not going to show this remove behavior unless there's at least one behavior we know that it's not going to be a null um, array here we can then say if old count equals one meaning if if there was only one behavior then we all we have to do is actually just null out the two arrays and we're done so we can say cb dot behaviors equals null cb dot weights equals null and we'll return. So this means, you know, if we're just clearing out the very last behavior, just null everything out and we're done. Otherwise, we can say flock behavior new behaviors equals an array of old count minus one. Same thing goes for new weights, old count minus one. And then we're going to iterate through the old count, again, minus one, because we don't want to include that last one that would be outside of our new arrays. And so new behaviors will simply get the original behaviors up to the very last one, and likewise for the weights to the very last one. We don't need to assign anything to the very last uh, new weights value because it's already been assigned. And so we can just pass those in to the composite behavior. So with those in place, we can actually now call these where we have the comments right now. So we can say here, Add, oops, add behavior, pass in our object, and down here we can do the same. Now there's one last thing we need to do with this, which is that when we're dealing with scriptable objects, they, the ones that we work with in general, when we're using the, the default inspector, they'll kind of save all our values automatically for us. It's built into how Unity shows the inspector for them. However, we need to actually set that manually in here. And we do this using a um, utility method called set dirty. So when we do decide to add a behavior and remove a behavior, we're gonna wanna set this to dirty, which lets Unity know this scriptable object has been changed and needs to be saved. Otherwise, what will happen is if we change it and then close out of Unity and come back, those changes actually won't get saved for us, which is very counterintuitive, particularly for a scriptable object. So we can simply do this by saying editor, utility dot set dirty and we're specifically setting our composite behavior object. We'll do the same if we remove a behavior. The other place we need to do this though is if we change any of our behavior fields or our weight fields we want to do the same thing and it's a little bit trickier here because we can't assume that any of these are happening so, and we don't want to be setting this dirty every single frame if it, we don't need to be. So how we do this is we are going to check for changes. So up here, right before we go through our for loop, what we're going to do is we're going to say editor GUI dot begin change check. And this, what this does is this kind of sets a flag and says, starts out at false, and if at any point during this loop now we change our behaviors or we change our weights, that flag will become true. Now how we use that flag is we go down at the after the loop and we're going to say editor GUI dot end change check and you'll notice that this one returns a boolean value so if something has changed then it will be true if it hasn't changed it'll be false so we'll say end change check and we're actually going to use this what is essentially a boolean value for us in an if statement we'll say if end change check so if that is true then we know something has changed and what we want to do is we want to again set dirty our composite behavior. And that's all. So now if we do make changes in here, we know that they will get they will be marked and get saved. So we can go back to Unity 
And we'll now see that in our default flock behavior, we now have add and remove options. We can start clicking add and those will appear. We can remove them, they go away. And if I create a new be composite behavior object again, we see we start off no behaviors in the array and for some reason my add array button isn't appearing. So that is something we want to double check. I see what I did as I accidentally left all of this content here inside of this else statement and I actually don't want that here. I want this else statement to end right here. And so down here, we don't want this closing bracket. So now that all of this is outside of the if else statement, there we go. Now that should resolve that. So now we can go back to Unity. And we see here now, new, we have this new composite behavior. There are no behaviors in it, so we only have the add button, but then we can start adding new behaviors as we want to. They all have a weight of one to start and we can also remove them and get back down to having no behaviors in the array. So with that, um, this is giving us just a nicer interface and again, a way that we don't have to worry about making sure that the behaviors array matches up with the weights array and that they're all populated properly. Um, that's all going to work for us now by default. So with that, we can start getting into some behaviors that go beyond the standard flock behaviors and see some other cool things that we can do with our flock. In the meantime, please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the video and want to see when more are coming out. Consider supporting on Patreon if you want to help support more videos like these being made. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.